Ja, ist Motion really worth it? Das möchte ich jetzt wissen. Dan. Sag mir, ob ich äh, Geld sparen muss, um mir das zu kaufen. Please. Sag es mir. Damit ich äh, weiß, ob ich mich durchschütteln lassen möchte. Okay, let's go. Is Motion really worth it? Today we're having a look at the D-Box Gen 5 4250i Haptic System. Yes, I had to read that name on the screen. Well, let's get to it. So first of all, a disclaimer, the D-Box 5 was provided by Simrace Shop on a loaner basis for trying out and making this review. But as always, all the opinions are my own that has no impact on the script or the outcome of this video. But especially if you're in Europe and you need anything regarding sim racing, definitely check out my partner Simrace Shop. It covers basically every needs a sim racer has. So the system we are looking at is a four actuator system and the price is 8,600. 95 euros. I think Simrace Shop actually has it on offer right now. So when you're watching the video, it might already have expired, but you're typically looking at something a little under 9,000 euros, which is a lot of money. So there are several types of motions. This one here actually moves the whole rig. So also your steering wheel, your pedals, everything. The motion of the D-Box has three degrees of freedom. We have pitch, roll, and heave. And the movement of the actuator is 1.5 inch. That's about... Oh, then, can you deckel drauf? Oh, oh. Das ist nicht gut. Keine Deckel drauf. Habe ich meinen Deckel drauf? Ja, gut. Ich habe gestern extra einen Deckel drauf gemacht. <lacht> Stuhlsen hat mal mit mir so doll gemeckert, dass ich keine Deckel drauf gemacht habe. Das hat sich eingebrannt. Jetzt sind immer Deckel drauf. About 38 mm. Not a lot, but I think for normal race cars, more than good enough. Every actuator can lift up to 114 kilograms. So a typical sim rig with you inside shouldn't be a big problem. And the maximum velocity of the system is 100 mm per second which results in an acceleration of about 1G. So what's in the box? Well, four of these actuators and the control box and tons of cables. The build quality is, as you should expect at that price point, really good. Nothing to criticize here. And if we take a closer look at the actuator first, you have the, the motor that is sitting here and then the control electronics attached to the side. Two cables running out of it, one for power and one CAT5 for control electronics. Then on the bottom you have a voltage selector, so it works oh. everywhere in the world. You can switch nice. it between 120 and 230 volts. In Europe, obviously, you want to set that to 230. <clears throat> and something that I also recommend to get are these mounting brackets. I think they are from ASR, Advanced Sim Racing. At least it has their logo on it. And it simply attaches to the side here. So I'll just use oh, two screws, is good. put it on here, another one here. Ich weiß nicht, ob ich dem vertrauen würde. Ne? Ich, ich meine, es wird schon funktionieren. Das haben Leute ja äh, getestet. Aber Mann, zwei Schrauben. Buh, ich weiß nicht. Make sure it's tight, because, well, it will lift the whole rig. Then obviously you repeat the process on the other side. I have this on my rig, so I'm not showing you. But this is pretty much how it mounts. These two holes here mount to the bottom of your rig. And then it's sitting in the rig. Like this. One bracket here, one bracket here. And the whole mounting process. Ah, okay, so in vier. Alles klar. It's so super, super easy. Should maybe like take an hour or so if you're doing it very slowly. And depending on how much time you spend on the cable management, you have to manage eight cables in total. Well, plus USB and power for the control box. But it's not really a big problem. I just routed the cables on the bottom of the rig and you can see them, but it's not really a big deal. Then once you mounted all four actuators, make sure you also put these on the floor. This is where the actuator's feet will sit in. It's a little aluminum cup thingy lets the whole actuator also like slide in it pretty well Ooh. and it will also protect your floor but yeah don't use it without them but i think we'll hop in the rig i'll quickly install this back and then we'll talk more about it in the rig all right i also want to quickly run you through the installation process it's pretty straightforward to be honest all you need is go to the download website from dbox was ich mich immer frage ist warum zum kuckuck wechseln die immer so viel ihre mikrofone also es gibt äh, zwei Streamer, die ich kenne. Also es ist einmal Dan Suzuki und äh, Quirk. Warum wechseln die immer ihre Mikrofone und ihre Kopfhörer? Ich raff's nicht. Gibt es dafür einen Grund? Da hängt, es ist, ich glaube, Dan hat so eine Auswahl zwischen drei Mikrofonen. Das hier, dann gibt es irgend so ein eckiges noch. Das hat er eben gerade am Rig dran gehabt. Und dann äh, auch den, das Bayer Dynamics Headset. Ich verstehe es nicht. Warum? Box. You need to create an account. I don't know why you would need an account to have motion, but... Yeah, uh, so create an account, you need it later, then download Motion Core, that is basically all the software to run the motion effects and everything. And you will also need to download System Configurator, it's to set up 
and do the firmware updates of the whole motion system. You basically only have to run the system configurator once. I'll show you how it looks like. This is what you're getting. So there's a page for firmware update. I have the latest version installed right now, so no update for me here. But you will also see that all your elements are listed in this. You have the bridge, which is the control electronics, and then the four actuators. It's pretty much plug and play. You don't have to do a lot here, to be honest. When you go to the configuration page, you can see the haptic bridge, control electronics, uh, four actuators, and then I have two configurations here. I mean, obviously you want the roll, pitch, and heave configuration. And it also shows you how you're supposed to connect it. For example, here, the front left called G should be connected to port B. Front right, D connected to port A and so on. And you can see I also have the configuration 10774 loaded here for roll pitch on heave. And that is pretty much it. If you have to manually create this, you can copy these settings, click apply configuration and that's it. The more interesting software that you want to look at is the game center. So you do have several tabs here. I think the only interesting thing is the coded gaming and the global settings, obviously, because here you can go to the control panel and have your global level of motion. I have this set to 100%. Then there's the slider for motion and vibration balance, output latency. I have everything on automatic here. Default mode is basically where the motion sits. When you don't do anything, you can set it to be in the middle or you can set it to low, you will see. We are lower now. I always have this in center because otherwise I feel I'm too low. Ich finde das so schön. <lacht> ich habe das letztens bei äh, Kimmy gesehen und habe mich gefragt, hä, wieso fährt denn der jetzt hoch? Und ich dachte so die ganze Zeit, hat, hat Kimmy irgendwie so einen LKW-Sitz oder sowas? Und dann siehst du halt in der Kamera, wie er so hochfährt. Das war oh, schon witzig. But you can do whatever you want. <lacht> Layout rotation, you can ignore this. If you properly connected it, you shouldn't have anything in here. So what do we have? We have coded gaming. This is the proper motion implementation for sim racing. You can see I have ACC installed, Automobilista, Flight Simulator, then Forza, R-Factor, iRacing. If you want something, let's say you want to play a dirt rally, all you do to set up the motion, it's click on it, click install, go through the process. It will automatically download it. Then you get to see some instructions. I mean, if you have to do something in the game, it will tell you this in the instructions. For example, here, see, the motion platform should in initialize when starting your first game. If no motion is experienced, do this. Uh, it's, I've never had to do anything that was not mentioned in this. So I'm going to do some... <sighs> Lesen! Mm. Rally in the next days anyway, so we can just install this. So go through it. That's it. Dirt Rally 2 is set up. Startup is automatic. For some games, for example, Forza, you have to click on launch because this is waiting for the data on the UDP port. But for the main sim racing games, you don't have to do anything pretty much. Then if you want to go into detail, you can go to settings. You can see I'm running very low motion on iRacing, for example. So this is another master motion slider. Similar to the one in the control panel, but you can set this per game. Then you can create several profiles here. If you want to try my settings, you can try copy these settings. When it comes to motion, less definitely is more, so don't overdo it. So as you can see, I don't use a crazy amount of motion, especially the front rear reactivity is turned down. I don't think it's insanely realistic if the rig does this front and rear motion. If you accelerate and brake, it just feels a bit weird. So I have that turned down a little bit. <coughs> then you can adjust how the vehicle reacts to banking and engine vibrations turned very low. I'm not a big fan of <laughs> having everything vibrating. It's also very loud to the engine vibration effect and then skid vibration, suspension, surface texture. There are different settings depending on the game you're using. Oh, brake pedal, ABS vibration. I wonder if that is similar to the Simacube ABS effect. I need to actually try this. This must have been rolled out in a newer update. I haven't seen this before. But this is for example for iRacing and if you go to R Factor, you will have slightly different looking settings. Uh, you see here we have acceleration motion and this stuff, row texture, brake pedal, ABS. Every game has slightly different settings. Play with the settings. Don't be afraid to turn <coughs> the sliders to zero and to the extreme to see exactly what they are doing and then create your own custom setup here. Okay, then there are also some more modes, not really relevant for sim racing, to be honest. Coded video, it's like a motion effect for movies. It's insanely amazing, to be honest. Yep. This is probably the coolest use case for the motion of the D-Box. It basically gives you special effects. That's richtig, richtig geil. 
effects when you watch movies, really cool with action movies and stuff. But Ooh. yeah, adaptive gaming is if you have a game that does not have motion and you want to, for example, like have the rig vibrate when you shoot or something in a shooter, you can do this here. I think it's irrelevant for sim racing. Adaptive audio, then it generates motion depending on the audio. Might be useful <laughs> for for those D-Box chairs or something, not really in a rig. In general, updates for games is really quick, like shortly after release or even before release of games. Das hat haben super wenig Leute, weil das wird zu teuer ist. Motion you will have it. Kostet richtig viel Asche. Have it in here. <coughs> uh, they also listen to feedback. They have a little user forum section on their website. If people complain about something, there's usually a quick fix. But yeah, that is pretty much the software part. I want to talk about something that surprised me a lot, and that is power consumption. I do have the whole D-Box connected to my home assistant using a smart plug. And you can see here in idle mode, so in the hold mode, the D-Box plus control electronics use 42 watts of power on average. And I thought while driving, this will probably go up a lot, but no, that's actually not the case. We will do one lap in Automobilista 2, which I think has the craziest motion output on 100% in the IndyCar around Road America. And I'll show you the graph of the power. All right, here we are, 100%. It will be wild. You can probably see how much motion there is going on on the several cameras. Dan is auf jeden Fall schon bereit für WRC. Dan ist bereit für WRC. Der hat sich schon vorbereitet. This is absolutely not usable, to be honest. It's, it's so much, but I just want to show you. Oh, God. <laughs> the power consumption if you use it to the absolute limit holy shit the <laughs> shifting is violent <laughs> oh i can't even drive <laughs> i mean what's new right <laughs> oh, that's probably already enough to see the power consumption but we'll just try to finish the lab i have no idea where to brake and everything Please do not judge my driving. Oh my god. <laughs> This is just absolutely violent. Not really a setting I would... das auf 100%, wheelbase auf 100% und Bremse auf 100%. Und dann ab in Rallye rein. <laughs> dann ab ist tot. Whatever you use. I guess the whole country now knows I'm about, I'm driving right now. No, it's actually the D-Box is not very loud unless you use engine vibration. Okay, come on the corner. Es geht nie darum, dass man schneller wird. Du kannst auch mit einem Controller schnell genug sein. Es geht dabei nie um schneller sein. Nie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. We'll just park it here. All right. And close the game again. All right, here we go. That is the power consumption of this session. And you can see it does not use a lot of power. We have the baseline here. There was the idle power of 42 watts. And while driving, there are a few peaks where it peaked in 102, 101, 106. Oh, but, that's good, yeah. but it's actually crazy if you think about it, if you add the active power of the gaming PC, for example. The, the game PC uses like 550 watts or so, even peaks at 600. Compared to that, the motion uses nothing. I expected way more here. And if you use more sensible settings, I mean, like I said, this 100 motion output, it's, it's not used. Nee, wieso Eisfallbrenner? Nein, das hat er doch gerade eben auch gesagt. Er dreht alles auf 100% und das ist bescheuert. Kein Mensch fährt das auf 100%. Da bist du, das ist ja völlig Banane realistically it's it's too insane so if you use something that is reasonable you will probably see peaks at 70 80 watts and for a full motion system i think that is a crazy low power consumption i was worried that it will use so much power with the full motion going on but no it basically uses nothing okay then the next point i want to talk about is loudness and i can tell you that of all the motion and haptics that i've tried so far this is by far the quietest system i mean you probably heard or not 
the motion while I was driving Automobilista on 100%. It's really, I mean, it's not like it's silent, but I would call it quiet. The seat mover I tried was definitely louder, a butt kicker will be louder, and the SFX100 that I've had on the rig is much louder. So if you have neighbors that are very sensitive to noise, I think the D-Box is still a system that you can comfortably run in an apartment. <laughs> I've had zero issues with that. Streaming always is a problem with these microphones, like you hear shifters and everything, it all spills in there. And the motion is very, very quiet, so that's good. Then one thing we need to Gut, das sind aber auch die lautesten Shifter auf dem ganzen Planeten. Talk about is the quality of the motion. And I think this highly depends on the game. For example, iRacing has a pretty oh, okay motion output. I think it's nice, but games like R Factor 2 or Automobilista 2 are absolutely excellent when it comes to motion output. You feel so much more than driving without motion. So that is really nice, but it's really depending on what the game is giving you for data. Is it realistic? I would say no, it's not realistic. The stuff that feels nice is road texture because you can really feel the curbs, you can feel everything that is on the road, every tiny detail. That is nice, but you cannot fake G-forces using motion. The sustained G-forces, like maybe if you have a motion rig with unlimited travel, you can get close. But something like the D-Box Gen 5, I wouldn't say feels realistic how a car would behave. I do think it adds to the immersion. You will have to get used to the effects. Like I said, it's not like you sit in there and you're like, okay, this feels like a real car now. You do feel more what the car is doing, but you will have to get used to it a little bit. But it definitely adds to immersion, especially when you're driving in VR. I think VR plus motion, it's such a fun combo Ugh. that everybody should try at least once in their life. But yeah, the effects are cool, but I wouldn't say it's very real. Ich denke fast nie Explorer. Realistic. Then another question I get asked very often, will it make you quicker? And I think that is a clear no. Motion will not make you quicker. It does not help too much to feel what the car is doing at the limit. I mean, if you really want to invest your money, like much money into something that will make you quicker, the Simicube active pedals are probably a good start or a cheaper alternative. Get a butt kicker, put wheel slip data on there. I think this can really help to feel the grip, but the motion, at least speaking for myself, will not make you quicker. I think if you run it at a level that gets crazy, it will probably make you slower because when you're shaking around in your rig, you can't focus as well on driving quickly as if you just sit there stationary and being able to focus all your attention on the force feedback and what pedals are doing and stuff like that. I think the motion can be a distraction. It does feel awesome. It can be a lot of fun, but it will not make you quicker. I want to do one lap on iRacing and basically talk about what I feel with the settings that I use, which are relatively low, but it's impossible to capture on camera. I mean, you can see how the rig shakes and everything, but yeah, it's really hard to show on the video how motion feels, but I'll try my best to talk you through it, what is happening when I'm driving and yeah. We will be doing a little bit of driving in the hyper car around Watkins Glen, my absolute nemesis combo. I'm always dying in the freaking bus stop, but yeah, I just want to quickly talk about what you can expect from a D-Box motion. So while I drive here, you feel the road. You can feel every little crack in the road. You can feel when there's a difference between several patches of, of road. You feel that in your butt pretty much when you drive over a line, for example. Or if I enter the grass, I can feel that the left side is on the grass. You feel the curbs and the suspension of the car, how it goes up and down. But you feel... Mommy! To Weihnachten, bitte. Much more in the force feedback, to be honest. And for example, if I drive here and, and overdo it a bit, understeer or oversteer, it's probably hard to induce oversteer here, but let's try it like this. You don't really feel that in the motion. You can also see like the braking and acceleration. I turned it down a lot because it was just not feeling insanely realistic to me to get moved like forwards and backwards depending on whether I break or not. Some people like that. I turn it pretty much off. You can still feel it slightly, but I didn't think that was very nice. But for my case, I mostly use it pretty much exclusively for road texture and suspension movement pretty much. Okay. I also don't have the rig set up to, to roll a lot in the corners because that just felt unnatural to me. But yeah, I also quickly want to talk about 
the other kinds of motion that I've tried. The first one being the SFX100 system. It is pretty much a DIY motion system that works basically very similar to the D-Box. Usually the servo motor is sitting on top here, but this is the second version that I'm building right now. The thing that is nicer on the SFX100 or SFX150 is you have more travel, 100 millimeters or 150, and the system is quicker. It gives you an acceleration of about 245 millimeter per second compared to the 100 of the D-Box. It's like a 2.5 increase. And you feel that. You feel that the motion effects are just more brutal, especially like up, down. It's definitely noticeable that the SFX system is quicker. It also is much louder. That's basically the reason why I removed it from the rig, because while streaming, it was just, it was too loud. It's... You heard it on the microphone all the time. It also has a lot of struggles with EMI. The D-Box is perfect regarding that. I've had zero issues with it. But also the D-Box is close to 9,000 euros. The SFX100 you can build yourself for 2, 2.5K, I would say. I think I spent something around that. Power consumption of okay. the SFX100 also is higher than the D-Box, but still completely reasonable. And what the D-Box definitely does better is the whole haptics vibration thing. The SFX100 can still get somewhat in that direction but i would add a proper haptic system for that but yeah if you like diy if volume is not a big problem for you i would probably try to build an sfx 100 compared to the seat mover a seat mover does different things better and other things worse i think the simulation of acceleration and braking the stuff wie wär's denn mit einem butt kicker motion und einem seat mover Then has to alles, and then has to alles drin. That I have turned down here is done much better by a seat mover because it will actually push your seat towards the steering wheel and away, which kind of makes that fake effect feel more realistic to me. Also, I think the seat mover is a little bit quicker than this system, but it can't really do a road texture or something. You can feel curbs maybe a little bit, but not very well. But the whole road texture is Uh, not really a thing with a seat mover. If you want to have haptic feedbacks, I can highly recommend just using a butt kicker because it can pretty accurately also do the road texture and the curbs. You can put wheel slip on it if you want to. That's something that really helps in the corners, for example, when you control it via sim up. And you can get a butt kicker set up starting at 150 euros or so. So to wrap this up, three things that I like about the D-Box system. First is the overall feel. It feels very organic. It doesn't have this digital feeling that some of the butt kicker, uh, well, a, a badly made butt kicker or seat mover setups have. It just feels right to me. Then the ease of installation, it is, you can set the whole rig up in one hour. It's no problem. It's easy to put on the rig. The installation process is very straightforward. It's a bit annoying that you have to create an account, but it's also not a big deal. So that is another plus. And the third thing, loudness. This system is really quiet. And I think for people that actually have to pay attention to that, there are not a lot of alternatives to something like that. If you really want to experience motion, a seat mover will be louder, at least the one that I tried. The butt kicker setup is probably a little bit louder. I mean, you can turn the effects down and then it becomes quieter. But comparing a butt kicker screw to the seat to this, in my case, this is quiet. Okay, then also three things that it is like. I mean, the first one the price it is crazy expensive there are competitors that are significantly cheaper and i mean especially if you like diy an sfx 100 i think performs maybe slightly better than this and is significantly cheaper second thing the travel 38 millimeters is enough for most things especially in sim racing with stiff suspension race cars but if you like to do rally I think more travel definitely helps. And the third thing I want to mention, sometimes the motion is a bit buggy. For example, I do eye racing. The curb effects and everything work just fine, but the general motion of the rest is delayed. And that is completely confusing if you launch a quality session and then you feel the curbs in time, but the rest... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's maybe <laughs> a problem vor, with Alter, the game. Stell dir mal vor, Alter, du fährst um eine Kurve, du die curbs. Und dann auf einmal das ganze Rig am Kippen, aber du bist gerade irgendwie auf Entgegengeraden oder so. <lacht> und dann fängst du an zu lenken irgendwie, weil du das so gewohnt bist und rammelst die Karre voll in die Wand. I've never had that problem with the seat mover or with the SFX 100 or with the butt kickers. It's been exclusive to D-Box. I've had it happen like three or four times maybe. A reboot of the game always helped in that case. But yeah, especially for example in an endurance cool. race, if you just hop into the car and then you notice, okay, the motion is weird. You can drive for an hour or so and you will have to drive your stint with that. And it's just very confusing. It gave me motion sickness because what I expect to feel does not happen, but it happens later. And yeah, that's a little bit annoying. So overall, would I recommend it? 
Well, yes and no. I think there are actually three verdicts that I have. If you're all about immersion, if you like plug and play, and if you do not care much about money because you have plenty, then yeah. Ja, Twitch Prime, meine Damen und Herren, sage ich da nur. The debug system is really great. I would always recommend try to test it somewhere before if you can. The system does have nice effects. The road texture feel is absolutely phenomenal. But many of the other effects do feel fun and immersive, but they do not feel realistic. But once you get used to how the motion will let you feel certain situations in the race car, it can be a lot of fun. Like for example, taking the 2022 Merc in iRacing and experience the porpoising in the motion, it's a pretty surreal experience, to be honest. Okay, the second verdict, if you are all about immersion, but the price is too high for you and you like DIY, build an SFX 100. I think it feels even a little bit better than this system. And it's just lacking in the haptics department, but even an SFX 100 with a really, really good haptic feedback system is probably less money than the D-Box. And the third verdict, if all you care about is being as quick on track as possible, then don't buy this. It will not make you quicker. It will not let you help what the car is doing at the limit better. I mean, if this was an advantage, you would see all the eSport pros using motion. Yeah. This is not the case. So if all you care about is speed, I would maybe get a butt kicker because it lets you feel the car at the limit a little bit better. Or for example, the Simicube Active Pedals, because these can really be a competitive advantage in my opinion. But for me, as long as I can keep it, like I said, it's a loaner unit from SimRace Shop, I will definitely leave it on the rig. Being able to feel the road texture and curbs... Is this so a lifetime loaner situation here? Also... And stuff like that definitely is a lot of fun. In my opinion, it adds to immersion. But in the end, everything in sim racing is very subjective. So if you can, try testing it before you actually buy it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope I didn't forget anything. It's probably a rather long video. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, if you liked it, maybe give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel to not miss future videos. If you have any questions about anything, put it in the comments down below or join the Discord. And yeah, I hope to see you all in the next video. Tschüss, bye, bye. Dan. Danke. Thank you very much, Dan. Gleich mal ein Like auf Donnern hier. Da ist das Video. Machen Sie, machen Sie bei Dan ein, ein Abonnement. <lacht>